Known as the Queen's Foot Guards, these special soldiers come from several regiments in the British Army. They carry out a variety of missions, but they are most commonly recognized for their commanding presence at royal palaces, such as Buckingham Palace. They are easily identifiable due to their red uniforms and towering black bearskin hats, but each regiment puts a slightly different spin on the famous ceremonial garb. The guards have been a part of British history for more than 360 years, and their distinct ceremonial uniforms are also steeped in history. And believe it or not, the Royal Guard's current tall, black bearskin hats were designed to intimidate their enemies by making the soldiers appear physically bigger. This odd fact is made extra amusing, at least to Brits, because the UK's opponents at the time were the Commonwealth's centuries-old frenemies, the French. No one less than Napoleon Bonaparte himself deployed grenadiers who wore similar helmets. Britain's own grenadier guards, in a vie to stop Napoleon's continental European advances, donned their own headgear of intimidation and met Napoleon at the famous Battle of Waterloo in 1815. The two nations fought in modern-day Belgium hat-to-hat, -hat, and the English hat trick worked. Or at least superior tactics won the day. The English came out on top, and the Royal Guards have donned the fur of black bears on their heads ever since. The Grenadier Guards seen at royal residences and participating in official ceremonies have a unique way of wearing their impressive and statuesque headwear. The strap for the hat is placed under the bottom lip instead of under the chin. This style may date back to the battlefield and has been influenced by the design of the hat itself. The hats stand approximately 18 inches tall and weigh around 1.5 pounds. That's not too heavy, but even a small weight gets exceedingly heavy over time. So yes, you need a beefy neck to be a royal guard. The hats are made from the fur of Canadian black bears, and it takes one bear pelt to make one hat. Each pelt costs roughly $751 and can last for 80 years if cared for properly. The decision to wear the headpiece's chain strap under the lip comes from when soldiers actually fought while wearing them. If a soldier was shot, the hat could fall backward and break his neck, per City Wonders. Another theory for putting the strap under the lip is that it's a way for one regiment to distinguish themselves from others serving the foot guards. Whether it's a fashion choice or a form of self-protection, placing the strap under the lip looks pretty uncomfortable. This is one instance where a stiff upper lip is not going to help. Because the Royal Guard's hat straps are so conspicuous, discussions about their purpose continue to circulate amongst the public. Beyond preventing soldiers from literally breaking their necks, discussion threads on Quora and Reddit outline other possible functions. Some speculate that the brass rings that composed the strap could have helped deflect sword blows back when they were implemented in 1815. However, because the soldiers were more likely to encounter bayonets used for thrusting at the body rather than swords aimed at the cheek, this seems unlikely. Another pretty reasonable purpose ties in with the hat's size and weight. If the strap was under the chin, it could strangle a guard. Chin straps don't go under the chin in general, that would be a throat strap. If a guard wearing a tall bearskin hat was running forward or moving around in actual combat, it makes sense that such motion might drive a throat strap back and right into their windpipe or Adam's apple. So they're left to suffer the comparably benign discomfort of a chin strap. Regardless, at this point, the hats and their design are more of a tradition than anything else. The hat maker, kept secret to not draw the ire of animal rights activists, just keeps producing them, guards keep wearing them, and that's that.